Hey guys, Momentai Jake here, bringing you a new deck profile. So this deck pro uh, profile is not mine; it is my friend. Shout out to my friend uh, for letting me borrow his deck because somebody asked for a Mirage Galgamon deck profile, and I don't have that deck unfortunately. But I do want to make it because it is a lot of fun, and I just realized I, I don't own a Bloom deck. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's get started. And so we were playing uh, four Wanyaman. This card is just really, really good and straight to the point. If you have a blue tamer in play, draw a card when attacking. This is just really good. And a little uh, off top, not a uh, quick topic. My friend likes to play max rarity, so this deck is very pretty. All right, so he is playing. No, this card is like three to four dollars too, which is insane. And so he is playing four Galmon. No, he's playing a lot of Galmons, but uh, this is the one from BT11. This is the or the searcher. So on play, look, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Add one card with Galgamon in his name and one blue tamer. And then you trash the rest. So, and then the win, the win attacking is if you have a tamer in play, return one of your opponents double your digimon to the hand. So you can get rid of memory blocker or stuff like that. That way you can start getting your memory back. Uh, if somebody in the comments can explain to me why he trashes and not bottom decks, I, I don't understand that. Like, why does it trash the remaining cards? Because blue doesn't get it get anything but trash back to the hand so if anybody could explain that to me if it's like maybe it was his lore or something let me know please all right and then he is playing four of the ex4 uh galmon on play both players draw the top card of their decks your turn once per turn when an effect adds cards to your opponent's hand you gain a memory so very self self-explanatory so he is playing one Galgamon for BD13. When attacking, both players draw one card from their decks. All turns, while you have your opponent has eight number cards in their hand, uh, it gets plus 1,000. So basically, it makes uh, Mirage Galgamon 13k, which is very nice. And then he's playing two uh, Madoki Betamon, uh, just a memory blocker. Uh, he is the, My friend is debating about taking these out. He does want to try putting in the... Impmon, I think it's BT10. That not Impmon, I'm dumb, sorry. Excuse that. Uh, Vimon. Um, the top three add one blue tamer to your hand, but he said he just wants to run it for the inherit. But he's still debating about it because when you play a tamer, you get a memory. But, um, but for now, it's, it's this. So he is playing 11 rookies. Now on to the level fours. So for the level four, it's the new BT13 one, playing four Galgamon. So when digivolving, if you don't have a Thomas H. Norstein in play, you may play one from your hand for free. And all turns, while the Digimon is eight or more, while, while your opponent has eight or more cards in their hand, he gets an additional plus 1,000. So Mirage Galgamon could hit a potential 14K. So place four of those, because you want to see those tamers. And then he is playing for Galgamon from EX4. So when Digivolving, we turn one of your opponent's levels or Digimon to the hand. It's a very nice card, just gets, gets rid of Floodgate and stuff like that, just like the Inherit from the Gal Galmon. It's a very good card. Uh, when an effect adds cards to your opponent's hand, you gain a memory, so it's, it's very, very nice. And then he's playing one little hybrid for game. Uh, you may Digivolve this card from your hand to one of your blue tamers as a level three Digimon. So when Digivolving, by placing one, by placing a, a blue level three Digimon card from your hand as the bottom digitization cards of one of your blue Digimon, um, this Digimon gets jamming, so it, like it can swing me, and you just pray it doesn't die. And so what's really nice about that is like you could put like all the Galmon, so you just put them under, you get the inherit still. So it's a very nice card, and um, you don't have to put it under her; it could be under anybody. From I think when it's over it again. By placing a blue level three Digimon card from your hand as the bottom Digimon card of one of your blue Digimon, yeah. So you could put a, you could put a, a level three underneath any of your Digimon because it's jamming. That's really good. I do not. I knew she put the thing under the jamming, but I thought they had to put it underneath her. That's 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 pretty good. Now on to the fives. So the fives. He is playing. The the ratios are pretty weird. But again, I don't know anything about this deck too much. I know how it plays, but. Uh, yeah, but for the fives, I see the rage is all the same. So they are playing four of the EX4 uh, Mac Galgamon. When did you, I mean three. Three of the EX4 uh, Mac Galgamon. 
when digivolving, return one of your opponent's level 4 or lower digivolve to its own hand. So that card, that effect alone is very strong and it's very annoying because it sets them back. Bouncing a level 4 or lower is just, it's insane. And the inherit is one attacking. If your opponent has 8 or more cards in their hand, unsuspend as Digimon. This one has the best inherit for the unsuspend because it is not all turns. And I will explain to that when we get to the Mirage. So he is playing two of the BT-13 um, Mad Gogglemon. So this card is really good. This card just wins games by itself. So when attacking, if your opponent has eight or more cards in their hand for for the turn, uh, this Digimon attack target cannot be switched. So essentially, let's say they have 10 blockers out. They have a redirect. They're playing against Machine Dramon. They have no security. This card goes, okay, that's cool beans. I'm going to swing for game because they cannot switch his attack target, which is very good. And the Inherit is, when an effect adds cards to your opponent's hand, unsuspended Digimon. So the, the, the problem for these, with the all turns, is that it is a triggered effect. And then we get to that in just a second. And so he then he's playing two BT-11 back out, come on. So when Digivolving, until the end of your opponent's turn, this Digimon gains blocker. And then for every four cards in their hand, this Digimon gets plus 2k um, until the end of the opponent's turn. So it becomes a very chunky blocker and a more annoying to run over. And all turns, uh, sort of the, the same as the uh, Mad Gogglemon. Uh, when an effect adds card to the opponent's hand, you unsuspend his Digimon. So the very annoying thing about this effect is that, let's say you don't want to swing, you're scared of swinging, and you Digivolve into the Mirage Yao and you bounce it into their hand. That triggers the, the all turns effect because it is not optional. And you will lose your restand. So you cannot like attack, tap a Thomas, make both players draw cards to unsuspend. Because it triggers on that suspend. So um, it's a little downside to the deck. Because when an effect adds, it says unsuspend. It doesn't say you may. It doesn't say if. It doesn't say buy or anything like that. It just says unsuspend. And I believe they're awarded the exact same way. When an effect adds cards, it was that. Yep. They're awarded the exact same way. So it's very, very unfortunate that it works like that. But the, uh, the good side is that this one is one attacking. Which is very nice to unsuspend. Now we're gonna go on to the level sixes. So, playing four Mirage uh, Galgamon. This card is insane. This card is very good. Uh, BT11. So, when Digivolving, return one of your opponent's level five or lower Digimon to the owner's hand. If no Digimon was returned by this effect, your opponent instead adds a top card of security stack to their hand. So it's, it's a very nice card, and then all turns. This is the reason why it's so annoying, because everything draws. When an effect adds cards to your opponent's hand, gain one memory for every four cards in your opponent's hand. So even if they have one card, that's uh, like four cards, that's one memory that they lose. But if they have multiples, it's um it's more memory, and everything searches. So like you, you play an Ogmon, you play a Patamon, uh, not, uh, you play um, a Palmon or, or uh, anything like that, any, any searcher, and you, and, you hit, and you get a hit, um, it's like, okay, after you add, uh, how many cards in your hand? Because I gain memory now. Uh, so just a very, very strong card. It does evil for four, but it sort of balances it out with the uh, alternate effect. And then he is playing one of the Mirage Galgamon. I think you should, uh, all the decks should be playing two of it. I think this card is very, very strong in my personal opinion. Uh, it has Evade, which is very nice. And when Digivolving, return one of your opponent's Tamers to the hand. So let's say you choke them to one, you bounce back their Memory Tamer. It's like, oh no. They they are choked at one. They don't have a Memory Tamer anymore. And they have to hard play it again. And all turns, when an effect adds cards to your opponent's hand, you may play one Thomas from your hand without paying the cost. So let's say you already have a Thomas in play. You play this, you bounce something, you play another Thomas. That way, when you burst into the uh into the burst mode you still have a, a thomas on the field ready to go and so I, I think this card is very very strong and it's very easy to trigger the effect for this deck but it's a, it's a very solid card i'm really surprised that it's a rare now on to the level seven so like i said my friend likes playing max rarity he has the pretty ones look at that look at that that's that is insane all right so this card is very very good so uh, burst Digivolve from Mirage Galgamon by returning one Thomas H. North into the hand. At the end of the previous Digivolution, you trash this Digimon's top card. So essentially, you burst for free, but at the end of the turn, it gets trashed and you go back to the Mirage Galgamon. So, when Digivolving, return one of your opponent's Digimon to the hand. 
that, that, that that's amazing. It's like it's a Quasitis ref, and it just oh, hey 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 hey, that's cool, that's cool Digimon, go away. And then you gain one memory for every four cards near your opponent's hand. So so you get the burst for free. Get rid of something on the board, and you gain free memory off of it. it. That's just really good. And the win attacking is why it's so good. If your opponent has nine or more cards in their hand, by choosing cards in your opponent's hand without looking, return them to the bottom of the deck so they only have eight cards remaining. So, very good. Essentially, it attacks twice. So, you can... Um, oh, what's the word? So, I think the win attacking is optional, I believe. Yeah, okay, yeah, it says by choosing. So that means you don't have to activate it first. Um, so let's say you have it. Uh, you have a you have a different effect for the, uh, the level fives to unsuspend. So you can swing, unsuspend it, and then you can swing, choose cards in their hand, bottom deck that they have eight to unsuspend it again. Very very good card, and it's a very very insane card. And once again, let's take a uh, a moment to just look at that. Look at that. That is very pretty. This card looks really good with the blue back background. Now we're going on to the Tamers. So we were playing, three, he is playing three of the new Thomas. This is the memory Tamer. Uh, start of your turn, two or, two or less memory, you gain three memory. And your turn, when one of your Digimon was Galmon or Galgamon and its name attacks by suspending this Tamer, both players draw one card from their decks. So essentially you, you can see the synergy with that. And the, uh, this one right here, the one that plays a Tamer for free. I do apologize for the sleeve sliding. I didn't. I didn't know he put he do oversleeves on his sleeves. So essentially, it's like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing. Uh, put everything away. Make sure you have eight cards or less. Unsuspend. You're gonna swing again. Tap Thomas. Okay, we both draw. You have nine cards again. Choose one card. Put bottom deck it. Unsuspend. Do it again. And the more you have, the more times you can do that. It's it's, it's just very very nice because none of them was for sure. And then we are playing the old Thomas Norton. He is playing two. On on play, draw a card. And main. If your opponent has eight or more cards in their hand, by suspending this tamer, unsuspend one of your Digimon that has Gao in its name. So this alone can be just like, hey, I have game, I have two of them. You have two security? Okay, one, two, three, four. Or three security. One, two, three, four. It's a, it's a very very good card. Except it's, it's even scarier because you're you can you can unsuspend the uh, the burst mode. And then he is playing two Nikolai. Uh, start of your main phase. If you have a Digimon with Galmon or Galgamon in its thing, uh, one of your Digimon gains jamming for the turn. And the idea jamming is so important in this deck. It's 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 important for the deck because I've seen it too many times playing against friends. Where not this one, but this one over here. Where they want to swing with the level fives, but they're worried about if it's gonna die in security. Because if it doesn't have the jamming, I, the chances of it dying in security in this format, because there's a lot of burst modes running around, there, there's a lot of um, uh, Belfamons too. Belfamons rage modes 14k, that's insane. And the fact that if it dies, you, you lose your stack, it just hits you back so much. So that's why the jamming is really important. He said he was debating about upping the count maybe to three, but he isn't sure because he's still tinkering around with the deck. But yeah, the jamming is very important because if you if you are able to swing, you you'll benefit off the inher the inherit to so unsuspend was one of the uh, level four uh, level six of uh, Mirage Galgamons. This one has a safer sa safer chance without the jamming because it gains power. And uh, Nikolai's second effect is. When an effect adds cards to your opponent's hand, by suspending this tamer, you gain a memory. So it's very good. Synergizes very good with the uh, memory tamer. Oh, sorry about that. And next, we have the options. So he is playing two full moon meteor impact. This card is nuts. So uh, main, return one of your opponent's Digimon to the hand, and then gain one memory for every four cards uh, in their hand. So basically, this card can be really very cheap, and the inherit is thankfully it is not activate main. <laughs> uh, security return one of your opponent's Digimon to the hand, so it's very very good bomb. 
Uh, next, he's playing two Sorai. This card is insane. This card is nuts. This card wins you against Raw Knights. Raw Knights literally cannot kill you if you play this at the correct time. It's like, hey, how much can you reduce it by? 13? All right, I'm going to play this. What does it do? You can't win next turn. Uh, card is just it's, card is just good. Uh, so trash the, uh, the top four Digi Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon. And then until the end of your opponent's turn, your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards cannot attack. Hence why it's really good against Royal Knights. And yeah, this, 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 this is just a really, really good card. And it's also really good against Shine Gray. Because if you play this against Shine Gray, and let's say they try to go into their burst, their, their burst mode, so they can pr they can pr promote marches and stuff, but they can't attack with them because while it's while they when they promote it up, it's treated as a Digimon, so they cannot swing, they cannot get free Digivolves, they can't get that free trash from the uh, burst mode effect because they cannot suspend their teamers unless they, they suspend it in by different means. And then he is playing three memory, three blue memory boosts. We all know what this does. Look at the top four cards of your deck. Add one blue Digimon, put it to your hand, bottom deck to rest, and has delay. You can trash this card into memory. Very good extender, very, very nice card. And then he is playing the one Ice Wall. We get it to blue deck. Uh, card that one for a reason. The card is it, it's strong. It's, it's really good. Hey, I'm going to choke you to one Ice Wall. You're like, well, I can't win now. This card literally gives you a turn to survive unless the opponent has ways to gain back more memory than usual. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. This deck's a lot of fun to play, and it's very, very cheap as long as you don't do max rarity. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys want to see next. Um, I do apologize for not uploading as consistently as I wanted to. I have been working a lot. But yeah, thanks for um, watching my videos. I hope you guys have been, are enjoying my commentary. And thank you so much for all the new subscribers. I never thought I would gain that much. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.